chamber concert we did in uh, in October here and it was a little it was a little big so it, was, it had I think uh, six or seven horns but this is uh, this was so this is the littler little big band, I guess. so welcome tonight my name is Jim O'Dell I'm the music director and conductor of the Concord band and we're so glad that you're joining us this is kind of a uh, uh, a special performance because it's the first time the full band has gotten together to present a concert. And so we've been chomping at the bit since March of 2020, and, and many of the musicians developed what I call COVID chops. And so the, the, uh, the instruments kind of sat in their cases for quite a while. Others did very creative things to continue engaging in their music making activities. And um, so tonight is a blend of kind of the chamber concert that we presented. You're going to hear some of those. If you, if you were here for that concert, you'll hear some of those same groups, but with different repertoire. And then you're going to get a treat because we're going to be featuring uh, the uh, entire brass section, the entire percussion section, the entire woodwind section on pieces that were just written for their sections. So we're kind of going from small to a little bigger, to a little bigger, and then um, to half size, full size, three quarter size. So at some point you're gonna see the band start filling in from the back uh, to, the, to the, the full ensemble. So now we're gonna have the, uh, our brass sextet and uh, our stage crew is frantically working to make some adjustments and I'm gonna be helping them out too. So very shortly we'll have the brass sextet.
of Christmas, Cocker Brand Sextet. <clears throat> There's always repertoire out there <laughs> for every season, and uh, this is a kind of a standard piece for brass groups. Uh, our principal trumpet, uh, Rich Given, who couldn't join us tonight, had recommended that we do this. And um, it's a real crowd pleaser, I think. You, you hear a real different uh, arrangement of that uh, piece. We're next gonna hear from our saxophone quartet. Um, this is the saxophone. Everything that you're hearing are made up from the members of the band. So um, this is our sax section. And I'm gonna move my stand. And I'm sure you're going to enjoy their presentation of, of two pieces arranged for saxophone uh, quartet uh, written by, originally written uh, by Rafe Von Williams, who next year will be celebrating, will be celebrating his 150th year from his birth with a concert, all of his music. And then they have a special arrangement of, what is the name of the arrangement? Uh, yeah. Oh, Hanukkah Variation. Hanukkah Variation. Rock of Age. Thank you. 
Concord Band Saxophone Section Quartet. As you can see, there are a lot of moving parts to this concert. We usually use that terminology in the music when there's a lot of moving parts, but uh, this is, these are the physically moving parts. And I recruited two of our uh, tuba players to uh, uh, become stage crew managers here as we get set up. We're gonna transition now to um, our Good Read Quartet and if you were here uh, in uh, October, they performed. And if you caught the live stream, obviously you, you heard that as well. And uh, we're really, they have a great program for you. You're really gonna enjoy this. And um, I'm gonna welcome to them to the stage now.
a speaker. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hello? I think that's it. Okay, hooray. All right, you can hear me. I've been asked by Jim O'Dell to say a few words about our next piece, uh, Allegro di Spirito di San Nicolo. If you're Italian weak, that means it's a, if your Italian is weak, that means a fast piece in the spirit of St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas, of course, being Santa Claus. Before I say that, there was an old German composer, wonderful composer, Max Rager, late German composer, wrote marvelous pieces full of variations on other themes and uh, all sorts of combinations of notes, uh, different pieces, uh, parts against each other, and usually winding up with the big grandiose fugue. Uh, I think this piece we're about to play is by an American composer, a very fine composer, a very serious composer, written a delightful little piece where he's taken 13, 14 or so Christmas tunes, put them all together into a four minute piece. So as opposed to the grandiosity of the Max Rager, we have the, uh, a smaller microcosm of that with all the same techniques being used. So you're going to hear these themes tossed around, change fragments of one. Listen carefully because they go by very quickly. And we do end in a slightly less grandiose, but a wonderful little fugue at the end. All four instruments coming in at different times uh, to wrap the piece, this delightful piece up. Uh, listen carefully, see what Christmas tunes to pick out. And in case you get confused, let me tell you, compute, com composers sometimes, they almost like graffiti or put little jokes in. So what he did, he stuck in this piece. If you listen carefully, you'll hear some Wagner. And if you listen more carefully, you also hear an answer by some Mendelssohn. I won't tell you where it is, but you might notice it. That's his little game that he's playing with us. So I hope you enjoy the piece, Allegro di San di Spirito di San Nicolo.
right. Wasn't that a fantastic quartet? Yeah. Mm. What a great, what a great piece too, and to have it end with that intricate fugue. Uh, a lot of fingers going on there, many notes. Um, you know, I mentioned that a lot of us, a lot of other musicians through this uh, period of shutdown, uh, some put their horns in their cases and have COVID chops and kind of, so we've been getting back into the groove and remembering how the, 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 the routine goes when you're a performer and the uh, kind of protocol. And so it doesn't, doesn't make any difference either for a conductor. I was coming out speaking with you without a bow tie. <laughs> and nobody said a word. <laughs> so we all are getting kind of back into the saddle again. So uh, we hope you enjoy the next uh, section, which is our percussion section. And um, there's some fun pieces, two pe fun pieces we think you'll enjoy. One is not really the holiday, it's from Riverdance, but we were supposed to perform this uh, this past summer at Fruitlands, and it was one of the rain out concerts. So, uh, and then we tried to do it again, another concert, and that got canceled. So we're gonna premiere it tonight. That, of course, is, is when you see the dancing involved in that, uh, you can see where all of those accents would normally be transferred into footwork.
So this is where we build, I'm not gonna see build back better, but, but uh, build, we really do build back bigger <laughs> from the back to the front. This is the brass ensemble um, filling in. We're going to start with a fanfare and then um, a piece I'll talk to you a little bit after the fanfare. This next piece is written by Giovanni Gabrielli, and G Gabrielli was a, um, a kind of a mid to late Renaissance composer, a little bit later, uh, and he wrote a number of these canzones, and they were meant to be performed by various uh, constructions of instruments that could be played on what 
is actually the original brass instrument. It was called a sackbut. It was the trombone. But it was also played on the instruments that were similar to the, the trumpet. They're, they were called cornettis and crumb horns and all kinds of strange instruments. But he wrote this, uh, these pieces to be performed in St. Mark's Cathedral in the church. And <clears throat> it's known as the first, um, uh, uh, not only what's called antiphonal music, there's a lot of call and responsing, uh, going on, call and response going on, but it was also written for what's called Cori Spagati, Sp Spazati, I'll probably screw in that up, and that meant divided chorus. And so here we have two brass choirs. We have choir one on our right, on your left, and choir two over here, and they're going to have a lot of conversations back and forth, but also the conversations will be at different dynamics. And at times they'll all be playing forte, and at times they'll all be playing piano and mezzo piano. Um, but the, the, the intricacy of the, the writing and the uh, orchestration and the sonority. And a lot of times you'll hear this uh, sound a little bit like a, a, an organ. And the idea here is in the church, they would, he would, they would position one choir in the back loft and the other choir in the front loft. So there would be this echo effect going back and forth. This is uh, Canzone Septimi Tony number two. Thank you. 
Welcome to Venice. We're going to now transition to our woodwind section. I'm not sure uh, if when you were in grade school or maybe even middle school or high school, they, they used to have a uh, opportunity where you could meet the band <laughs> and various sections would come out or perhaps it was a, a woodwind quintet or a brass quintet. Um, and of course, during the, in, in the fourth or fifth grade when you started, uh, many times the band director or the instrumental teachers would bring in a music company and they'd bring in all their instruments and and the, uh, the, it was a petting zoo and the, the kids could choose an instrument and fiddle around with it a little bit and hopefully not break it. <laughs> but um, you're getting a chance to meet our band through various small groups and then larger groups and then of course the full band um, and, and preceding the woodwind section. Um, this is an interesting uh, arrangement of carols by Leroy Anderson. And we all know Leroy Anderson, of course, with his work with Boston Pops and his uh, immortal sleigh ride, uh, which we'll perform tonight, and, and other things, the typewriter. He wrote the typewriter, which was a, a nice showpiece. But I found this, uh, through a colleague, found this collection of carols that he arranged uh, for Woodwind Ensemble. So we hope you enjoy this. We'll be doing three of them tonight.
Isn't that beautiful clarinet writing? Isn't that gorgeous clarinet choir writing? Beautiful. Especially the low reads. <laughs> okay. I think we've built back better. <laughs> and uh, uh, everybody seems to have found the right chair, which was, is, is very successful in a concert like this, where you have a lot of people moving around for parts. parts. We're going to tune again, and we're going to open with uh, the traditional piece that was commissioned by the Concord Band, by, uh, uh, commissioned by Jim Kernow, and this is the uh, Overture to a Winter Festival.
How many of you have come to our winter holiday pops before? Well, that's good. So this is the, the same thing except no tables and no food. <laughs> well, there is another big difference, right? There's no Santa. <laughs> and of course, there's no raffle. <laughs> but um, when we first started rehearsing for this concert, the first rehearsal back, we started with uh, uh, Overture to a Winter Festival. And <clears throat> I, I, we, we ended, and I think everybody was kind of like, wow, it's like we've never stopped playing that. <laughs> and it's kind of like riding a bike, just to kind of remember what to do. And so that was our first kind of aha moment that we are back as an ensemble and we're playing music together and we're, we're getting a chance to socialize and talk and get caught up in person and be safe. Uh, but um, that was kind of our aha first rehearsal moment. We're gonna feature our principal alto saxophonist, David Souther. And uh, he is going to um, present to you a wonderful uh, solo version of White Christmas. Thank you. 
Dave, of course, uh, played in the saxophone quartet, but that instrument was soprano sax, if you notice the difference. It was it's like a shiny clarinet, um, but uh, very talented, and we're glad you, uh, that he's with us and he offered that great rendition. We're going to feature a, um, an arrangement of Jingle Bells, <laughs> but it's, it's uh, a little different <laughs> than you're used to. So I want you to kind of keep an ear open for where the version of Jingle Bells and what tonality or mode it might appear in and its various uh, tr transitions. This is by Julie Giroux. Uh, Julie is a very prolific composer living on the uh, West Coast and a native of Massachusetts. Is involved in a lot of uh, film writing now, but she has quite a prolific output for uh, a concert band, wind ensemble at all levels, professionals down to um, kind of the, what you would consider the, the middle school. Um, she also wrote for the Concord Band, uh, Boston Liberties, uh, which was a four movement kind of a, almost a mini suite uh, years ago that we've played many times. So we hope you enjoy Jingle Them Bells.
traditional pops, we do a, um, a sing-along. And we usually have one of the uh, band members lead the sing-along. But we're not doing the sing-along today. Uh, it went out with the round tables and the food. <laughs> <laughs> so we're playing it safe, no sing-along. But it doesn't mean that if you hear something here that you recognize, and you'll recognize everything, that you can't sing along. So this is uh, Leroy Anderson, A Christmas Festival. Thank you. 
We have a little costume change. <laughs> so one of the things that, that, that is just so uh, special and endearing about playing live music is that you get to play it for people. <laughs> and we are so pleased to see such a great turnout tonight. Um, and uh, in this balmy weather, I guess I could call it, uh, but it's been a real special treat for us to uh, come back as an ensemble and be able to share our music uh, making with you. We hope to see you back here in March, early March, where we'll, we'll be doing our Rafe Vaughn Williams tribute um, and a lot of great music there. And uh, in your program, we've made a special thank you to a number of people, but please join me now as we thank our technical team in the cameras and in the back and in the front and the audio. Could you give them all a hand? Thank you. <laughs> Somehow our concerts have begun to include one particular family more and more. I've noticed that either in the technical side or the musical side. So we have good representation here from the troop crew. Um, we are encouraging you to, um, if you are able to donate, uh, there's a box, a donation box on your way out. Uh, no donation is too small or large. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we uh, stopped taking, we stopped having ticket sales for our, uh, at least for our formal concerts, and we decided we'd just carry that over in, in this situation because it was a, an, a, a deviation from the usual. 
So we now have um, one of everyone's Leroy Anderson favorites, and this is his sleigh ride. Not only aptly titled Pucker Up, because, because of the mistletoe, wherever that went to. <laughs> but because we're, we, a lot of us use some sort of a pucker to play our instrument. honor in that piece, of course, there's two big honors. One is the horse whinny. Thank you, Jim. Take a bow on that. <laughs> and the other is the whip. And that was Summer Box. Nice job, Summer. <laughs> Putting the whip away for something else. We're going to conclude with a tradition, just like we opened the full ensemble with a tradition. And this is a uh, 
Bill Tolan, who was the first music director of the Concord Band for 35 years. And this is his arrangement of Old Ang Syne. And we invite you to sing along. Thank you so much for coming tonight. Uh, we've been waiting for a long time to have another Christmas concert, and we are happily thrilled to have you here. And on behalf of the Conquer Band, wish you a Merry Christmas.